So in this video, we're going to try to use a single variable equation to solve a classic pursuit and overtake problem. So first thing is read through the problem one full time before you do anything. So we'll do that. Suppose that two boats start out 100 miles apart and at the same moment begin moving due east. Further suppose that the westernmost boat is moving twice the speed of the other boat. If five hours later the westernmost boat overtakes the other boat, determine the speed of the two boats. So the speeds of the two boats are the unknown. So the first thing to do I think is to draw a good picture. We have a westernmost boat starting out a hundred miles away from an, a boat that's to the east of it. And if we think about the traditional con compass rows, we get north, south, west, east. So we're going to have a westernmost boat. And there's going to be a boat that is to the east of it. And it says that those two boats are initially 100 miles apart. So what we want to recognize is that the line segment that I've drawn represents distance. So they're going to start moving at the same time and at some point they will overtake each other. So we need a point on the graph that represents the point at which they catch up with each other. The westernmost catches up with the easternmost. So I'm going to call that point C for my catch up point. Kind of a lame name, but it works. There's the catch up point. So we have a westernmost boat, each easternmost boat, and then we don't know the distance between the easternmost boat and the point at which they catch up. So I'm going to call that distance D. We'll give it a name. And I don't know the distance from the westernmost boat to the point at which they catch up with each other, but I do know that it has to be the sum 100 miles plus D miles. It has to be the sum of the lengths of those two line segments. So this total distance from W to C is going to be 100 plus the distance from E to C. So 100 plus D. And so we're going to have some information about the westernmost boat. We're going to have some information about the easternmost boat that we can catalog. And this is a classic distance that you travel equals your rate or speed times time. And this relationship holds as long as this rate is a constant rate, which we're going to assume that the rates at which the two boats are traveling is constant over the duration of the trip. Simplifying assumption. So the rate of the western boat, we measure, the rate of the westernmost boat, we don't know. In fact, we're trying to find the rate or the speed of the two boats. So this is the rate of the westernmost boat. I'm going to call the rate or speed of the easternmost boat R sub E for rate of easternmost. But we are told how these are related to each other. We are told in the information here that the westernmost boat is twice the rate of the easternmost boat. So the rate of the westernmost boat is two times the rate of the easternmost boat. So we have in a distance equals rate times time model we need distance, rate, and time. Here I've dealt with rate. Time we know they start at the same moment, so they will have traveled the same amount of time, and we're told that at the five hour mark, they catch up with each other. So time traveled will be the same for both boats. The distance will be different for the two boats. The westernmost boat will have traveled 100 plus D miles. And the easternmost boat, because it's going slower, will only have traveled D miles. So I have distance, rate, and time for each boat. So I can use my distance equals rate times time model to set up a distance, rate, and time relationship for each of the two boats. So the westernmost boat, the, for distance equals, right, distance equals rate times time, we're going to take the distance traveled, 100 plus D, has to equal the rate of the westernmost boat times the time traveled, which is the five hours. And for the easternmost boat, the distance it traveled is going to equal the rate it traveled, R sub E, 
times the time that it traveled, which is also five hours. So when I look at these two relationships, I see that I have one, two, three distinct variables. I have the rate of the westernmost boat, the rate of the easternmost boat, and D, which represents the distance that the easternmost boat travels to get to the catch-up point. And the issue is, is we are trying to get a single variable relationship set up. And right now we have three variables. So we need to find ways to reduce the number of variables we're having to deal with down to a single variable. So the first step that we can take is recognizing that the rate of the westernmost boat can be written in terms of the rate of the easternmost boat. The rate of the westernmost boat is can be replaced with two times the rate of the easternmost boat times the five hours. And this is 100 plus D. And here, at some point, it's going to make our lives a little bit easier if we get the coefficient 5 in front of the E. The order of multiplication doesn't matter. So instead of writing rate of easternmost times 5, we can write 5 times the rate of the easternmost. And if I do this, I can simplify here. I get 2 times 5 is 10 times the rate of the easternmost boat equals the 100 plus D. And the key here is to recognize that we're trying to find the speed. So we would like a single variable equation that only had speed or rate in it. And so here I have the rate of easternmost boat showing up in each equation. I'd like to hang on to that because I'm trying to solve for it. I don't need to know this distance. I haven't been asked to find that. And what I want to recognize is that distance shows up in each equation. So if I can isolate this distance d in each equation, I can then set the two equations equal to each other. So to isolate d here, I can subtract this 100 from both sides, which will give me distance equals 10 times the rate of the easternmost boat minus 100. And now I have distance isolated in both relationships. And if each of these is equal to the same distance right here, then they can be set equal to each other by the property that we call transitivity in mathematics. So this tells me that 5 times the rate of the eastern boat is going to be equal to 10 times from here. These are both equal to D. So 10 times the rate of the easternmost boat minus 100. And then I just simply need to get uh, the rate of the easternmost boat by itself. So I will know its rate. So I'm going to take and subtract 10 times the rate of the easternmost from both sides. 5 minus 10 is going to give me negative 5 times the rate of the easternmost is equal to 10 minus the rate of the easternmost minus 10. 10 minus 10 is 0, so I'm left with the minus 100. And to get one rate of the easternmost, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. So negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. So 1 times the rate of the easternmost boat is equal to negative divided by negative is positive, And 5 goes into 120 times. So the rate of the easternmost boat is 20. We need to get units on this. And what we want to recognize is that our measurements are in miles and hours. So this speed or rate has to be in miles per hour. It says find the speed of both boats. Right now I know the speed of the easternmost boat. And we know from this relationship that the speed of the westernmost boat is just two times the speed of the easternmost boat from right here. And we can replace r sub e with 20. So we get two times 20 is 40. And again, the units are going to be miles per 